The Christian community, I wrote this this morning, the Christian community is plagued with narcissists and they use religion to achieve their goals and cover their selfish ambitions. They will use faith and God spoke to me or I had this vision to manipulate and con to get what they want. They will use people as stepping stones and then discard them. Think of Judas in the Bible. The religious people used Judas to betray Jesus, and what'd they do? They just, we don't care what happens to you. We'll give you your 30 pieces. What happens then? Judas went and he hung himself. He was so devastated. Well, these people that are being used by these systems and then they're discarded, they don't know what to do. They don't know where to go. They've been deceived, but they don't know how to get back on solid ground. These um, proudful leaders have a relentless striving that can't rest. They're driven. Just think about how driven Lucifer is to be number one. When you're in the Lord, you can rest. Doesn't matter what other people are doing. God didn't call us to compare ourselves with anybody else. That's a lesson in itself in life. Learn how to be content with what God's given you. But these spirits of people are driven. They're just driven and they can't. It's what are they doing over there? What are they doing? I got to do more than they're doing. I got to do this. I got to do that. We see this competition that is ungodly in churches today. They can't rest. And compromises must be made to work onward and upward the ladder under the world system. In other words, these people and these churches and these leaders, they compromise. They take bribes. We talked about that a couple weeks ago. They take bribes. They do whatever they have to do to be number one. It's an adulterous love affair with the world that says it's all about me. But when we're motivated by God, you can celebrate what God's doing in other people. You actually don't compete with them. You see the person's gifts that God's put in them and you actually celebrate them. You're excited about other people's gifts. It's not about you. It's about us. You value people and what God's put in them. You focus on your relationship with the Lord and let God determine the exposure he gives you. Just think about it. Jesus never went around exposing himself as some great one. He'd always try to hide. Don't tell anybody. Today, we got to get it on the TV. We got to get it on the newspapers. We got to spread it abroad. Jesus wasn't about making himself great. He was just about obeying God and doing what God asked him to do. So now we're going to look in 1 Kings. We're going to look at Adonijah, the lust of power, the glory hog. This is, um, you guys doing okay? Yeah. Adonijah, just a little bit of history on him. He's David's fourth son. King David, and David was dying. He was only 70 years old, but he was worn out. He had a rough life. When you really have a lot of trauma and tragedy, and, and, and he had a lot of his sons killed, and he had Absalom, you know, tried to take away his kingdom from him. He had a rough life. And at 70 years old, he was pretty much worn out. And at this point in time, they, they went and got a young woman thinking, if anything's going to cause this guy to come alive and warm him up, it's going to be this new young chick, you know, we're going to get this girl over here and get him to warm him up and get him all, whatever. Because David was dying and David had told Bathsheba that her, their son, Solomon, would be the next king. But when you're passive and you don't take your place, it opens up the door. A lot of people are very passive and they don't do, do what they're supposed to do. So if, if we don't do as leaders what we're supposed to do, then other people come in and take over. So here we have the spirit of Adonijah this fourth son who thinks he is going to be the king. He has the spirit of a narcissist. He has a spirit of pride. He has a spirit of trickery about him. And he feels that this, he is the oldest son now. And he believes that just because, with, from another wife, he believes he should be the king. So what does he do? In this time that David is weak, David hasn't really uh, put anything else into place. This son decides that he's going to declare himself the king. So what does he do? He follows Absalom. And what did Absalom do? He hired all these chariots and all these things. He's going to declare himself. He put on a show. Narcissist spirit, they love to draw attention. They love to make big shows. So he's going to do the same thing that Absalom did. He's going to steal the kingdom away from Solomon. So here we see this is happening. So he proclaimed himself king. And long story short, Solomon got placed in there by um, 
Well, let, well, let me read some of this. There's so many facts in here about um, what happened. I'm just going to go through it really quick. Now, in 1 Kings chapter 1, Adonijah, in verse 5, he exalted himself. He said, I will be king. He prepared him chariots and horsemen, 50 men to run before him. They always have people up there. They love their fan clubs. You know, I am great. I am great. Oh, he's so great. He's so great. Let's, let's put a badge. I, I, I love this person. And his father had not despaired him or dis, displeased him at any time in saying, what has thou done so? In other words, he was never corrected. He was a kid that probably got whatever he wanted when he wanted, so he didn't learn life's lessons at a young age, so he thinks he can do whatever he wants to do. If we don't discipline our children at a young age, they grow up to be monsters, right? So here um, we see that there's two groups. We have the group of Joab, who was from the military, and Abithathar, the priest. So now they join Adonijah. They join that group. But now there's another group that wasn't invited to this party. They were the Zadok priests, the prophet Nathan, and others. They weren't allowed to join them. So here we see this little coup that's going to overthrow David. And then we see that Nathan, who's a prophet of God, he comes to Bathsheba and he says, we're going to have to go and tell David what's going on. He has no clue that his son is about to steal the show here. So they go in and they tell him what's going to go on, what's happening. And it woke up David enough to say, no, call, call these different guys, call Zadok, call Nathan. We're going to anoint Solomon is going to be the one. We're going to anoint him to be king. But now we want to see the, um, what happens. These spirits don't give up easy. If a person really has a controlling, has to be number one spirit, uh, it's amazing what happens because they don't give up. They still want to be number one. So now Solomon and Bathsheba's life's at stake because if, if Adonijah gets to be king, what's he going to do? He's going to kill the competition. So they come and they gather around the anointed ones and they say, David, you've got to put in play what you're going to do. So what happens now to Adonijah is that he all of a sudden is afraid and all the people that are with him, they disperse. And now he runs to the, to the horns of the altar and all of a sudden he's afraid for his life. And Solomon, being very young and naive, he t gives him a warning and he tells him, he said, if you will submit to me all the days of your life, you'll be okay. But if not, there's death awaiting you. So wouldn't you think that you'd take the warning? Wouldn't you say, okay, I'll submit? Not when you're a narcissist, you still have to be number one. So he fought, and he fought. What did he do now? He comes in the side door, and he comes to Bathsheba, and he tells Bathsheba, I want you to go to your son Solomon, and I want you to ask for the wife, the one that was keeping David warm. I want you to ask her to be my wife. Now, if you know anything about history, that if he marries one of the concubines of David, that could still put him in, in line to be a king. In other words, he was trying another way for the throne. So what did Solomon have to do? He had to have him killed. And that's the sad thing, is that, wow, if they can't be number one, they will destroy everything, cause chaos. They cannot handle being number two. So it's very sad that Adonijah ended up the way he did. Uh, he was killed, tasting the bitter fruit of selfish ambition, a lust for power. And we have to call it what it is, you guys. There is a lust for power in almost every avenue of life today people want to be that in that position but that is the spirit of the world and it's not the spirit of the lord um and i want to close with this they ultimately don't get away with it what happened to him he ended up dying he ended up in hours what looked like something was really going to happen, he ended up, they ultimately don't get away with it. They shift blame, they cover up, they lie. Um, they lie their way out of everything. So if you're with a narcissist or an ex-narcissist husband or you've been through something like that, they lie, they cover up. It looks like they're never going to get caught. They deceive people, people take their sides, they have a way of conning people, but God knows. Romans 12, 9, vengeance is mine. The Lord says, I will repay. This is what we have to do. We have to let God do it his way. Right. Wherever you're at in life and there's these kind of people around you, you have to put it in God's hands and say, this might not mean my timing. 
I would have liked to see this person pay right then. But God has things. There is something called the sovereignty of God. We haven't heard much about that in our upbringing in church. There is a sovereignty of God. The sovereignty of God played here. Solomon was to be king, not Adonijah. The sovereignty of God won out what God wanted he's going to have. And we have to trust in the sovereignty of God. Say, Lord, you know I'm going to leave the consequences with you. You are God and I am not. Our flesh wants to retaliate. Our flesh wants to get back. They're liars. They're liars. You know, we don't, we don't like having to deal with them, but we have to constantly say, Lord, you are God and I am not. Vengeance belongs to you. Do it your way. And Psalms 73, they're on a slippery slope. And this is a scripture, 73, 16 through 20. You can read the whole thing later, but then I perceived their end. There is coming an end to all these kind of people. Even in the government, the ones that think that they're acting like they're saved and they're Christians, and, and there's a lot of stuff going on under the new world religion that it's so pretense. They all act, and they've got so many people to see, but God knows. God knows. He said their end, I, they said, that you shall set them in slippery places. You cast them down to what? To destruction. God resists the proud. He rebukes them. He resists them. He fights them. Just like he f he's letting Lucifer right now. There's a lot of things he's doing on the earth. There's Luciferians. There's people that worship Satan that are sacrificing children. What do you think abortion is? There's a lot of this stuff going on right now, but God will have his say in the end. You cast them down to destruction. How they are destroyed, what? In a moment. Suddenly. Destruction comes suddenly. Just like this... TV evangelist, con artist that's been, uh, for years, I was like, how does he even stay on TV? Well, they let him stay on TV. There's reasons for that I won't go into. But they're con artists. They raise money. They rip people off. They lie. They pro make false promises and all this and that. And I was like, well, I'm kind of glad he's gotten caught. I mean, I'm mercy motivated. But it's like, you know what? How are these people going to learn? If they don't get caught, I, I won't go into that whole story. But slippery in a moment, they are utterly swept away by sudden terrors. He who digs a pit will fall into it himself. They, these, you know, this is what happened to Adonijah and it happens to a lot of narcissists. They pursued dramatic, unrealistic goals. His goal was to be king. Solomon was already, and he even said it, God had wanted Solomon to be king, but he was still trying to get in. Even though they know it's not God what they're doing, they still tried to do it their own way. They set unrealistic goals based on uh, delusions of grandeur they're destined to fall they misread situations by overestimating how well they're doing in some aspect they misuse people as tools in reaching their own goals this misuse comes back on them they overestimate their abilities they fall into the traps that are set for others Proverbs 26, 27. He who digs a pit will fall into it. And he who rolls a stone, it will come back on him. They stumble because God resists the proud. God resisted the Pharisees in his day. And there's a whole generation of narcissistic, self-centered people that God is resisting. And we have to put our trust in him and not be like them. Come apart and not be like them. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We don't want to be like those narcissistic people that want the glory now. There's something about it. When we give God the glory, he lets us share in that. There's nothing like the presence of God. But these people that are doing it their own way, what they're going to get is their own fruits. But when we walk with him, we abide with him, we get his fruits. We get to share his love. We get to share his peace. We get to share his rest. There's nothing like abiding in the vine. Why would you want to try to be the vine? Mm -hmm. Retarded thinking. <laughs> Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word that sets us free, that we know we're called and set apart to be the bride of Christ. And we know there's evil men out there, Lord. You, you see them too. And we just, anybody that's watching right now we, that are hurting and being abused by these kind of people, Lord, we just thank you that vengeance is the Lord's. You will repay them. We put them and the care of this into your hands. 
We thank you, Father, you have a way to deal with these crooked people all over the world. You have a way and your timing, and we trust you to do it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Everyone said? Amen. Amen. If you would like to see more messages from Roberta on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to her YouTube channel, Roberta Morrison, her backup channel, Roberta Morrison 2, and on the Living in His Presence Church website, where you can access the messages on the top center of the main webpage. There are free audio downloads of the messages. We are viewer supported. On the main webpage at the top right is a give button. Thank you for watching and see you next time.